The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the May 26th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows any of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. It just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't give us a call, you can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Send it early, please. And in that subject, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any ping will do. But Stevie prefers those private pings. It's just easier to keep track of your request. So let's go ahead and get this show started. A terrific Thursday, of course. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. It's a green machine out there. The Dow is up 612 points, nearly 2%. Uh, S&P up 92, 2 and 3 tenths percent. NASDAQ 103 and 2 tenths, 379 points. Russell's up 47, 2 and 6 tenths, 4 and 2 tenths or 1 tenth of a percent for the uh, semis. They're up 118 points. Trendies are up 3%. Spot volatilics is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. That puts the wind at the sails for the S&P 500, and it should continue to move higher. But it's really going to be about the 4 o'clock close, not the 108 um, time frame that we're talking about. So I'll give you the numbers to pay attention to, and you'll want to watch that going into today's close. Gold is up 80 cents, silver up 11 cents. Uh, lights recruit up a buck two, uh, natural gas up 32 pennies. Today is going to complete a TD9 count top for natural gas. Now, one of two options here, either price starts trading above today's high tomorrow, tells you about a strong moment to move to the upside, then you do not want to step in front of that train to the downside, or we get some type of retracement, maybe back to its oscillator and change line, or maybe the top of its daily profile. 30 year treasuries off 12 ticks. She's trading out at 141.15. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside. Amazon up 114 points. Booking Holdings up 102. AutoZone up 71. You've got Mercado Libre up 64. Google's up 60 bucks. To the downside, it's Molina Healthcare up 14 bucks or 4%. SBA Communications off 6 bucks or about 2%. Uh, Medtronic PLC is off 5 bucks or 4% out there. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. At. Let's begin by taking a look at the equity future contracts. We'll switch over to our white background chart here. We'll look at the daily time frame and see what kind of information they are providing to both you and I. What we know here is that if we take a look at the ES Mini, the ES Mini is uh, trading above the top of its bullish, uh, the center, I should say, of its bullish structured daily profile. It's going to first go target 4,095. 4,095 is the high from the trading session of what day was that? Let me get my cursor out here. That was from the high of May the 17th. And if price takes that out, it's going to go head up to the 4168 level, which is the top of its daily profile. And I'm not saying that is where price stops. I'm also not saying that this is a one-way one -way ride to the upside. We'll take a look at the intraday time period charts out here because I know the 30-minute charts across the board are telling us to expect or anticipate some type of short-term top to form between now and 2.30 out there. Sorry, that's the best that I can pin it down, which is an hour and 20 minutes out here. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ is likely going going to go target at least first 12,594. That's its most recent high. Again, from that same uh, candle session, I believe it's the same day, but let me just confirm that for you. That would be from the day of May the 18th out there. Now, 
as price gets up into that area, you'll also see a black dash line. I believe we're on the right charts. So let me make sure. Yep. And that is the center of its bear structured profile. That is where it starts to get a little bit bumpy for the NQ, and that's between 12.622 and 12.995. If we take a look at the Dow, the Dow is on its way. It's really dealing with the high from that uh, prior swing point. That happened to be in the Dow's case, or the YM, I should say, was on May 17th's high. That high out there was 32.692. We're trading at 32,689. Odds favor that price is going to make a move to 32,875. Is that it? Is that the end of the move? Likely not. But that could be a place where we start to see some type of short term bottom out here. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, she is, or he is, trading above the top of that daily profile. And it is trading above the uh, swing point from uh, that was uh, April, May 18th, I should say, at the 1841 level. So you get a close above 1841.60, where price probably takes off and heads to is the top of its uh, consolidation, or the bottom, I should say, of the consolidation it broke down through. And that's the low from uh, September the 2nd. So that next price objective to the upside for the Russell would be at the 1882 level. Now, I mentioned a short-term uh, top that could be forming out here or should be forming out here, and that was coming from the signals from the 30-minute time frame charts. So we'll go take a look at those. Then maybe we'll take a look at a couple of questions that have come in. I want to get behind on those. Then we can go back and dig into the details, give you the play-by-play, -play, the Harmon Killebrew version of what's going on from a short-term standpoint. Hey, anybody know the nickname of uh, Harmon? I know you had uh, two nicknames out there. I know one of them. Does anybody else in the uh, listening audience know what Harmon Killebrew's nickname was? Pretty easy. But if we take a look at the 30-minute time frame charts out here, you'll see that each 30-minute chart formed bar number eight. That's right, Bogart Dog, the killer. And he had another one, right? It was something Harmon. It was Harmon, 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 uh, something out there. I can't remember what it was. Uh, slamming? No, it wasn't Slamming. But the killer was his primary nickname out there. And uh, great first baseman, by the way. Hammerin, Hammerin, Harmon. That's right. Thank you, Jay, out there. So if we take a look at the play-by-play, -play, you've got bar number eight that is forming inside of the 30-minute time frame charts. Now, odds favor that it's going to go ahead and complete bar number eight. If it does complete bar number eight, because we're at the high, as long as bar number nine completes, which means it has to close above the close of bar number five out here, then you've got a TD nine count top. And that would then suggest that price would pull back or the first target on a retracement would be the oscillator and change line. Now, these values are going to change slightly between now and 230 out here. But to give you a guideline, you're looking at about 4045 for the ES Mini, 12202 for the NQ, 32559 for the uh, YM, the Russell 2000, about the 1836 level. So we got a bit of harmony out here. How did Stevie come up with Harmon Killebrew? Well, it was the harmony that we're taking a look at here inside of the 30-minute time frame charts. So we just have a few seconds before we go to break. Let me do this here. Let me, uh, let me pull up real quickly if I can. We'll switch some screens out here. We'll give you the real play-by-play -play for the NQ out here, and that's the multi-time frame charts. And we begin by taking a look at what? Um, see if there's any other signals or any other time frames out here. Really, the 30-minute 30 30 minute time frame chart seems to be the driver out here. I do have a, a topping pattern in the 5-minute chart, but really it looks like the 30-minute chart is going to be the driver. Now, folks, you get a TD9 count pattern between now and 2.30. Your price starts straight and you're close above the high, whatever that high is. That tells you about a strong momentum move into today's close, meaning closing at today's highs, which we haven't seen. Steve Rhodes with tf &E. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 600, SP 87 points. Let's get to our first question. First question coming in from uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Brent writes in, he'd like to take a look at, he went long the SOXL, that is the uh, semiconductor uh, 3X out there at the open today. And uh, he says, I'm sure you want to look at the SMH. Absolutely, so we will. And you'd still like the numbers on the SOXL for support and resistance. So uh, let's give Brent all of that. Let's start with our three panel market update, uh, our three panel multi time frame uh, uh, set of profiles out here. So first with regard to the SMHs, price is about to run into resistance sprint. That is at the 237.60 level. That is the top of its bearish structured daily profile. Close above that would be a bullish signal and that would then suggest a move up potentially to 256.29 area. You're looking for support and resistance. The daily support is 218.42. The weekly resistance level is 256.29. Price is attempting to get back and close Close with inside the monthly profile out there. Last month, it was a close below. So if it can save itself by closing above 234.31, uh, is it next Tuesday? Is next Tuesday? I don't know when the end of the month is here, if it's tomorrow on Friday or if it's uh, next uh, Tuesday. Um, I think the 31st is Monday, so it must be tomorrow is the end of the month. So, Brent, you'd love to see this close above 234.31 out there. So that's on the SMHs. You also want the same information for the SOXL. So let's go put that up on our screen here. And as we take it, then we'll go switch over to the multi time frame set of charts for the SMHs, see if there's any additional information. So in the case of the SOXL, resistance would be the top of its daily profile. And that's a 2407 support, 1898. The resistance, because price is trading below its weekly profile, the only thing I can provide to you there is 32.28, and that would be resistance. And on the monthly time frame, it would be because price is below the bottom of its monthly bullish structure profile, 31.91 would be the level. But those, don't pay attention to those. Maybe the daily are okay, but the weekly and the 
they, they, you know, if you're trading the three X's, no problem with that. Just just go to the one X version because that's going to provide you with the best information. S speaking of providing you with the best information, that means we should go take a look at our multi time frame charts out here. We should give you the play by play. Now, here we'll just take a look at the monthly time frame. On a monthly time frame, what helps us out with regard to the SMH is that price formed a road's momentum indicator top that entitles price to pull back to support. In the case of the semiconductor index, that's what it's done, and so far it's sold. And that number is at two six. 1614. Price closes below that, we've got a different scenario going on, but that's not the scenario right now. On a weekly basis, with regard to the SMH, as you can't see it here, it was on the black background chart out there, and that was this. That was that there was a three drive to a bottom pattern. The first drive was the week that ended January 28th. The second drive was the week that ended March 18th. And that leads to the exact uh, uh, third drive, which was May the 6th. And that was confirmed the following week with a bullish hammer candle. So you've got a confirmed weekly three drive to a bottom pattern. Now, geez, on a three drive to a bottom pattern, Brett, you can get all the way back up to where that began. And if you want to know where that began, that's right here on this candle session. Basically, I'd say it gets back to the uh, January 21st high out there, the week of January 21st. But let's just take things one step at a time. We can see on a weekly basis in the SMH, the oscillator and change line changed colors about four, five, six weeks ago. That is the upside target right now on the weekly time frame. If price can get above that, then that's telling us about a move up into the 270.16 area. Notice how I skipped 256.29 in the bottom of the profile. That's because when you trade below for two consecutive bars below the bottom of bullish structured profile, what typically occurs is price will make a counter trend move up to that center line, and that's at the 270.16 level. So if the SMH it can take out the top of their daily profile, not far from doing that. That's at the 237.60 level. Then, Brent, on the bigger picture, you're looking at that move potentially to 270.16. That is if price can close above 244.15 out there. With regard to intraday time periods out here, the 65-minute chart uh, says that uh, you had a TD nine-count pattern that formed. If price is able to close, so that, that bar finished at 1245. This bar that's in, it will be 150 in the afternoon, about another 30 minutes, about another 28 minutes to be exact. If in 28 minutes, price closes above 236.27, the TD9 count will not even have had a hiccup. And that tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside. But that being said, resistance is not far away. 237.60, followed by 244.13. Other than that, Brent, I don't see anything here. The 30-minute has already negated its TD9 count top, so that looks pretty strong out there. So I like the trade. Best of luck to you, and it looks like you've got more to go in the semis, but you're about to run into a resistance area. Hope that that helps you out. The second question coming in from Dennis G. Dennis wants to take a look at ticker symbol. Let's get this fired up here. R-T-L-R. -R. Oh, he's got a twofer. And he wants to take a look at ticker symbol EE. -E. So let's take a look at the uh, first one out here. And the first one, again, being RTLR. RTLR, which is, it's just loading up on my screen out here. Surprised it's taking so long. That is Rattler Midstream LP. I can share with you that price is going to uh, form a TD9 count top this month. And the pattern may complete next month. Remember, it's the high of bars 8, 9, or the bar following 9 that could identify that top. Well, considering the weekly chart here is uh, trading above all resistance, it suggests to me, suggests to you, that the uh, TD9 count top does not complete itself in the month of May. We've hired to go is what the weekly chart is telling us. The daily chart is really saying the same thing. Today is going to become bar number four. You're above profile levels out there. There's no topping pattern in place as we speak right now. So it does look like the rattler wants to rattle the cages to the upside. And the uh, price target looks like a TD9 count breakdown level that comes from the monthly time frame at 1987. You're trading at 1636. Now, and the play-by-play -play version, you've got a 30-minute TD9 count top with price below its uh, oscillator and change line, and it looks like below a profile. This suggests a further retracement. The 195-minute time frame chart has a completed TD9 count top. It, too, is suggesting a suggestion of further retracement, and its um, target will become 1555 or thereabouts, the oscillator and change line. 15-minute has a TD9 count uh, top out there. Price could be another price, place of support, could be 1626. So for support right now, we've got 1626 and 1555 out there. Longer term, though, 
things look muy bueno for Rattler. So the question is, oh, did I even? Oh, yeah, okay, good. I did switch over to those charts. So let's go take like a double E out here and see what EE is for Dennis. I'll get that going on my black background charts while the white ones populate. And what I can share with you on, oh, this looks pretty good too. This is Accelerate Energy Inc. Now, this is an IPO. It looks like an IPO or maybe it was a ver reverse uh, merger. Uh, I don't know what it was, but April 13th is the first day that I've got 2022 data for. So we're really limited on data. However, what we can share with you, come on, populate daily, populate. There you go. So the daily time frame out here, Dennis, you can see that price is trading above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. That's at 2706. If price closed above 2706 today, that is a bullish outcome. What does that bullish outcome tell us? A bullish outcome tells us that price could go target this swing point from April 28th. That high out there is... 2797. Now, price is already trading into that swing point. That swing point had value of 1.3 million shares. You're trading into it today with 414,000 shares. So that's going to be a resistance. But if price can clear that, then you're back to its all time high. That was the trading day of April 18th. And that high out there is 2910. 130 minute chart shows a TD9 count top. Price might pull back to 2656 out there, 2640. Those are your targets to the downside kind of retracement. Steve Rhodes with CFN. Be right back, and I'd love to hear from you. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got the Dow up 568, S&P up 83, NASDAQ 100 at 345. Let's go to our next question out here. This one coming in from uh, Hector and the fuel injectors. And Hector wants to take a look at Google. Happy Thirsty Thursday, he says, and uh, back at you. What is the weekly 
target to get a bullish reversal at the D point uh, for the uh, weekly time frame for Google. Well, what you'd really need here is you'd need a uh, right now, it looks like the candle that could form would be a bullish hammer candle. So what we have out here is you had an open this week at 220208. So what price is going to need to do is uh, maybe, and you don't want it to get much higher. So I would say price would need to close at about 2237, 38, 36, 40, somewhere right around there. That would be about it. And that would give you a, a small bodied candle and could be the bullish reversal candle that would complete an A to B equals CD to the downside. And then if we get that, uh, what that says, Hector, is you should get a price move up to its oscillator and change line, and that would be at 24.50. Now, there's real possibility that you could get that. We won't know until the close tomorrow out there. The weekly time frame uh, two days ago formed both a bullish hammer candle and a bearish gap to the downside. So what that tells us, and you never know, it was the bullish Hammer candle, the candle signal, or was it the gap to the downside? Well, here's what we can say. Both Hector and I know that if price were to close above 2183.09, that is the low of the day prior to that gap to the downside. In other words, the low of May 23rd out there. If we close the window, we repair the broken window out there by closing above 2183.09, that suggests that price moves higher and that that was the hammer candle that was the uh, signal uh, from two trading days ago. And that could suggest that in the case of Google, not suggest, it would tell us that its price target would be 2375. That is the center of its bullish structured profile out there. And you've got 2450 as the oscillator and change line from the weekly time frame. So that would be your range. So I would say that Hector and Patty, the key level to be watching, whether it's today or tomorrow, is going to be 2183.09. You get a close above that, you will repair that window, and that will suggest higher price. So I hope that uh, answers your question. Again, I'm just guessing on uh, the bullish hammer candle for the weekly, but uh, that's the best guess that I can give you as of this moment. Next question coming in from uh, Eddie. Eddie and Boca Raton. And Eddie Eddie, of course, one of his favorite stocks is NVIDIA, NVDA. We took a look at that yesterday, right? And I think I gave you some downside price targets and some upside price targets. I think the downside was the bottom of its daily profile. And boom, voila, there you go. So what happens now, I'm not talking about post-market pre-market when all the crazies can be out there. I'm talking about the cash market here, which is where we take a look at these profiles. So as we take a look at the profiles, price open today at 160.36. The bottom of the profile, 160.50. You got to love it. So the profile is held. Now, in the case of NVIDIA, Eddie, uh, price is above the center of its bullish structured profile, above some descending trend lines. Uh, are you looking at this? Shoot, you're not. Hold on a minute here. Stevie, Stevie, Stevie. I hit myself with my own 2 by 4 But right now, I was taking a look at those black background charts out here. So now you can see it. Eddie can see it. We can all see it out there. And that price target being that 189.50 to the upside out here. Now, the weekly time frame chart for NVIDIA, has not completed a, uh, you know, has it completed the A to B equals C to or not? It's close, but I think it's no cigar. I mean, it did form a bullish hammer candle. So, Hector, you're really looking, you know, for some kind of candle to look like it was about three weeks ago for um, NVIDIA out there. But, you know, the, the low of that session, 157.55, 149.49 is the one to one A to B equals C to. So, I don't know. What I can share with you, and your specific question is, do I think? That, uh, that we've bottomed, you say, if we bottom in the NQ, because we should be down with NVIDIA earnings. Well, no, no, you're, you, sh you say you should be down. What do you mean? Buyers and sellers are the ones telling you where you should be, right? So buyers and sellers are saying, no, price held support, bottom of bullish structured profile. You're now above key resistance levels, so price should go target 189.50 out there. Could this be the moment that the selling has finally dried up? Yeah, in the short term. But longer term, are you asking me, do I think that we're headed lower? Yeah, I do at this stage of the game. Do I think that today is the sell signal for the next leg lower? No, not at all. And I don't think it's Tuesday either or Wednesday. That doesn't mean we're not going to see a market move lower. 
It's just that I don't think that we have seen the top to sell into out there. But with regard to NVIDIA, uh, let's go take a look at those white background charts, see if there's any additional information that I can provide to you, since I know that you trade this out here. Go see what its other signals are saying. So here, you got a nice TD9 count on the monthly basis. Price has found support. That's the bottom of its monthly profile. Eddie, and that's at the price point of 170.78. You'd love to see that hold. Here on the weekly chart, I expand it out. You can see the A to B equals CD to the downside. Again, you'll see that price has not really made its way all the way down to that level. Uh, that does not mean that we haven't formed some type of a bottom. We certainly have a bullish hammer candle, and now you've got a bullish engulfing. So buyers are telling you on a weekly basis, Eddie, and this is what's important. Buyers here, because and this is how they speak to us. They speak to us in a language, and that language is Japanese candlesticks out there. They're telling us they're certainly attempting to form some type of uh, short-term bottom, and price could easily bounce all the way up to the uh, 216 level. That's its oscillator and change line. Of course, we're saying 231.60 is more likely an upside price target out there. You're trading at 179 right now. As we look at the intraday time period charts out here, what do we have? A 65-minute TD9 count top, but if price uh, trades above, closes above the high of that pattern and that's at 179.95 tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside quite frankly the intraday charts are telling us about a strong momentum move to the upside with one caveat price needs to close above the top of its 195 minute profile 179.35 you're trading at 179.27 right now but a close above that would then suggest that higher price 189.50 being the next upside price target so i hope that helps you out to eddie uh that takes care of the questions that i've got so far from email oh, oh, oh hold on a minute here Hold on a minute here. Let me make sure. Yep, I've gotten all through the emails here. Um, so let's go. Eddie had mentioned the NQs. Let's go take a look at the NQs by taking a look at the so-called uh, intraday set of charts out here. The ES is going. Oh, the NQ is the one that's up on the screen right now. Perfect. So with regard to the NQ now. I guess we already covered this. Am I covering this again? Sorry, I don't want to do that. So here you've got uh, bar number eight that is formed. You've got bar number four. Nine that's going to complete on the 30 minute time frame. You've got, uh, what, about 20 minutes left here. You've got to get a close above 12, 229 for that pattern to complete. And that basically is where price is going to target. Price is going to go target the uh, 12, 199 level, and that is its oscillator and change line. So just because we're going to get a retracement here, or we should get a retracement here, don't think that that is it. That is not what Stevie's charts. No, Stevie's charts are absolutely saying that we should expect or anticipate, at least on that 30-minute time frame, some type of retracement out here. The 10-minute uh, here has joined in on the fun as well. Let's go take a look at the ES Mini out here because I think we had already covered the NQ. So let's go take a look at the charts for the ES Mini. And if I'm recovering this, my apologies, but there's no questions here in the Tiger's Den, so we might as well go take a look at this as well. Now, in the case of the ES Mini, she is going to go, we, we talked about the first price target there, right? The first target is the prior high. If you didn't catch that, that first price target is 40.95. If we get a close about 40.95, that's going to ensure that we get up to 41.68. Well, heck, the spot volatilics right now is giving us that assurance, but we need to see the close. We don't need to know what the spot volatilics is trading at as we speak at this moment. Of course, we do know that it's trading below its 50-day exponential moving average, which is 27.55 or 27.28. Close below that says we have further rally to go and says that what we're getting then would just be retracements where you would want to potentially buy the dip from a trading stand. But do you want to do that going into a holiday weekend with all the shenanigans going on across the globe? Probably not. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back. If we don't have any questions, let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange because you want to talk about positive market breath? Holy shnikes. Look great. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be 
be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. 729-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okie dokie. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator reading, which has gone from the extreme oversold or the oversold condition, really, once you get down below minus 150. That's the center box that we're taking. In fact, let me get rid of the new high, new lows out there. I don't know why those are even turned on, but uh, probably somebody asked me about something. I forgot to turn them off. So let me go turn those off just to not have the screen here. Where is that? Uh, do, 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 do. Give me a moment here. There we go. So that should take care of that. This should take care of this. Perfect. Okay. So now we've got the uh, center. Uh, panel number two is the advanced decline oscillator. That's the difference between the 39 and 19 period. Exponential moving average would be advanced decline line. The summation index, which is just below that, is controlled by whether price is above or below the zero threshold level. When it's below, the uh, summation index will turn red. When it's above, the summation index will turn green out there. Okay. Now, we, plus 150 is overbought. We're well above that. We're plus 261.10 uh, as we speak right now. So one of two things is likely to happen as we're up at here. Either this is going to turn down right away and the New York Stock Exchange will pull back to work off some of its overbought condition. Or 
price is going to continue to move higher and set up some type of divergent pattern where price is moving higher, but the advanced client oscillator starts moving lower out there. So I don't know which of the two it is, but we are in that extreme overbought condition, but we can still get more overbought. We haven't been at this level. Last time we were anywhere near this level takes us back to June of uh, 2020 out there. The other thing is, when you get a close above plus 150, which we did yesterday, what the signal is here is that we're not done seeing higher highs. So even if the New York Stock Exchange turns down tomorrow, as an example, this tells us that we're going to take out then today's highs. It's just simply how this indicator works out there. So um, how about another indicator? How about market breadth out here? If we go take a look at the market breadth for the S&P 500, we just switched over to bullish. And in a pretty large way, we now have 215 constituents trading above the top of their daily profile and only 37 trading below the bottom of their profile. Folks, that is market breadth bullish very strong. Again, it gets back to you should be looking for a dip, not to sell like this is the end of the move and we're headed lower out there. You should be looking to buy that next dip if we are so fortunate to get that. But you've got nice bullish crossover. Now, we don't have that yet for the weekly time frame. So I'm not saying the S&P is out of the woods. In the weekly time frame, there's 96 constituents trading above the top of their profiles and 128 trading below. That's what's going on in the S&P 500. The NASDAQ, one, the NASDAQ 100 out here, similar message. The daily time frame, you now have 43 instruments trading above the top their profiles, 13 instruments trading below the bottom of their profiles out there. This is a very bullish message as well. Same type of setup, though. The weekly time frame chart is saying not so fast. The weekly time frame chart has got 12 above and 37 below. But you've got your market breadth bullish on the daily time frame. This suggests, and is with the spot volatility index, as long as it is able to stay below the 50-day exponential moving average, the signal there is simply to look for dips that you would buy. And in those instances, you'd look at the shorter-term time frame, such as a 30-minute time frame, which we've already covered, has got a TD9 count top that's likely to form between now and 230 and we should expect and anticipate a retracement out there so if you get it i don't want anybody thinking it is the end of the move the end of the world and jump on the short train out there it's just not the signals that are present in the market as we speak. Now, I don't have any other requests. I don't think there's anything inside the tiger symbol. It's a wait, I take that back. It says, could you please look at C so we can. Uh, let's go trade over. So we're in the black background screen screens out here. Let's get over to the three panel charts. So let's take a look at Citicorp out here. And let's get that going. I've got to switch over to my other charts here for the multi time frames. And let's go see what Citicorp is doing out here. All right. So for Citicorp, the question is, appears to be breaking out of the downtrend of the last few days. Would you consider to buy? And if so, where? Um, whoa, it's trading out of the downtrend. So I've got Citicorp that is, uh, for the last four or five days, is well above the top of its daily profile out here. So that is a bullish message out here. Um, I see a rising trend line. I don't see a descending trend line. The descending trend line that I see is on the weekly time frame. And price this week here may close above the top of its bearish structured weekly profile. And it closed above 53.02. That is a bullish message out here. That says that price could run all the way up to 65.20. So I know your question was, is it a buy? Um, let's go take a look at the white background charts and see what kind of signal information we can find there. So as we switch over to these screens, the upper left is going to be the monthly time frame. And the monthly time frame says what? Says you could get a TD9 count bottom and a buy the D point bottom. It looks like a buy the D point bottom. That's a That means it's a Gartley buy um, as we close out the month. Give me a second here. I'm just going to look off screen, see if that completes the A to B equals CD. Oh, it does. So the one-to-one -one price projection on a monthly basis out here was 46.41. You got down uh, below that level. And now you might end up with a bull sash candle. So that would be a weekly, I'm sorry, a monthly currently buy pattern for Citicorp. So, yeah, that's a bullish message for sure. On the weekly time frame, well, that also has an A to B equals CD. That formed a uh, bull, yeah, that's formed a couple of different bullish reversal candles. The most recent one being yesterday, a bullish piercing candle. So now with price above, uh, that's a weekly chart I'm looking at. I take that. Did I say weekly? If I didn't say weekly, I meant weekly. 
That's the weekly chart. So you've got a confirmed by the D point there. Again, price above the top of that bearish structured weekly profile. Assuming that it closes above that level tomorrow, which is 5302, that suggests a move to 6476. Now, the monthly chart suggests a move to 60. 07 or thereabouts, that red oscillator and change line. So if price closes above that, then that gets us into that 6476 level. The daily time frame, if you're asking, is it a buy? It is not a buy right now. And the reason is because today is going to become bar number eight. That says that we should see a short term top form between today and Tuesday. And I'd rather you wait that out, especially because price is coming into resistance of 56.45, a TD9 count breakdown level, and instead try to buy the retracement inside Citigroup. Now, again, you might have to wait till Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. But on a daily basis, do you hop on that train when you get bar number eight forming below the TD9 count breakout level 56.45? If you're a good visionary and you can see and you know for sure that that level is going to be broken, then, yeah, go for it. I just don't know that. I just know that when you get those TD9 count patterns out there, you want to pay attention to them. And that's what we've got when we take a look at Citicorp. So I hope that helps you out uh, inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And, of course, the question was buy where? I, we, you know, you sort of have to wait for that TD9 count top to form, and then we could take a look at the 30-minute time frame charts or the other intraday time frame charts. But my target, I guess, on the downside would be at about 51.15, and that would be at the top of its daily profile. Could be a little bit lower, but I don't know where that oscillator and change line is going to be on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week out there. So I do hope that helps you out with regard to Citicorp. It sure looks good long term. Be patient. See if you can buy a pullback. See Rhodes with TFNN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com 
educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So let's come back to our 30-minute charts out here for the equity future contracts. Each of them have form bar number eight. Uh, you got six minutes for bar number eight to nine to complete out here. I don't see anything that suggests that we're not going to get a completed TD9 count up. It looks like bar number eight will be the high of that pattern. Now, in a really bullish market out here, from a momentum and a trend standpoint, where price will find support is at that green oscillator and change line. Now, these numbers are going to change just slightly. But right now, the print on the ES Mini is 40.49. On the NQ, it's 12.224. On the YM, it's 32.581. And on the Russell 2000, it is 18.38.20. The NQ is the, oh, I take that back. The NQ and the Russell 2000 have both just formed new 30-minute market profiles. So in the case of the NQ, it is a bearish structured profile. And the center is at 12209. So the 12209, 12224 level, which is our target to the downside. Now, price may not even get down that, that area. But if it does continue to retrace, that would be if price holds that level and then continues to move higher from there, that is a really strong bullish message. The NQ could still pull back to 12076, the bottom of that profile, and have nothing wrong with it on a 30 minute time frame. But that first level of support is at that 12. 220, let's just call it 12,209 at the moment. In the case of the Russell, which has been strong like bull, price is still trading above the top of that new profile out there. And that's at 1839.50 out here. But if price, I am showing the 30 minute charts, am I not? I think so. Oh, maybe that's the daily. All right, sorry about that. Let's change windows here. Stevie screwed up. Thank you. Got my wingman. Uh, out here. So there, there's the charts out there. Sorry about that. And thank you, Mr. Bill. So those are the 30 minute charts. Um, I'll leave these up here uh, for a few minutes. And then, you know, I've got to simply uh, get some charts ready here for the two o'clock update. But look, we're expecting retracements. Again, those numbers are green oscillator and change lines that you're taking a look at. If prices pulls back there and moves higher, very strong trending market to the upside. Folks, stay tuned. You've got some great programming. I'll be with you tomorrow at 8 o'clock sharp. Please join me at 8 for the Trader's Head Show. We'll be recorded 